Hello, my citizens of the world. I'm Yes or No, and today is going to be easy peasy lemon squeezy. I mean, no big deal. We're just talking about my entire life's philosophy. <laughs> Crickets. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this is something I've thought a lot about. So hopefully, you know, that means I'll be able to tie it up in a nice little bow for you guys and deliver it to you as a little, little gift. And yeah, don't say Christmas didn't come early this year. Okay, anyways, so my entire life's philosophy. Without further ado, let's talk. Okay, so essentially what I believe in is... I believe before you make any decisions on the individual level, you should back the frick up and look at your life with some perspective. And I mean like, you know, whoop, 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 backing up to like kind of the upper atmosphere, looking down at the world as if we're just like a speck on it and maybe whoop, 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 backing up even further and being like, oh my gosh, the earth is just a pebble in this big thing we call space. And when I do that, when I think about really how truly insignificant my life is in the grand scheme of outer space in the universe, it just reminds me how truly useless I am. No, it, it just reminds me that really nothing I do matters. It doesn't matter at all. Any feeling I have doesn't matter. Any feeling we have, the seven billion of all of us, it doesn't matter. We're all gonna go extinct one day. Hopefully one day far from now. <laughs> but we're all gonna be dead. That's actually, I love that. Philosophers used to sit with like skulls on their desks just to remind them of their own impermanence and I really like that that like that's my starting point when I philosophize about stuff like okay death is imminent where do we go from here this is very nihilistic of me <laughs> it's like god is dead and we killed him <laughs> Thank you, Nietzsche. This has been my TED talk. <laughs> no, but so where do we go from here when nothing really matters? Well, at least it's my opinion that when nothing really matters, that means there's no real thing as good or bad, right or wrong, good or evil. And so if you don't have any of those things guiding your moral compass, it's like, well, how do you decide which way to orient yourself as an individual? And so what I usually like to think of after I take things out is I whoop, 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 bring it back to the individual. And I'm like, okay, as individuals, we still have a very strong desire to want to stay alive. And more so than that, we also have urges and needs and wants for many other things in this world. And so I'm like, okay, maybe there's no such thing as good, but maybe the greatest good we could do is try to fulfill those needs, desires, wants, urges, what have you for ourselves. If we think about it that way, well then it really behooves me as an individual if all of society has their needs met as well, right? Because when all of society is taken care of, they can usually help then provide for my needs better as well. We like, we all lift each other up. And yeah, so that line of thinking is essentially how I can read Atlas Shrugged and still be a liberal. <laughs> no, but it's true. It's, I really do believe that selfishly, like us being taken care of helps other people out. But in the same vein, everyone else being taken care of helps us out. I love paradoxes, oxymoron. I love this kind of stuff. And I realize I'm probably gonna lose a lot of people with this train of thinking just because it really is implying that there's no such thing as a selfless act. I don't believe any single act is selfless. I believe every single thing we do is selfish, even if it doesn't appear that way on its, on its front shiny nice cover facade. You guys are like, wait, 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 but what about when somebody gives their kidney to another human? Well, you know, I think that's helping multiple people out, but I don't think it's selfless. It's kind of like when somebody, like when, a guy's thinking about giving his jacket to a girl, you know, to make her feel all warm and snuggly after their date. He might be left off a little bit colder because he gave his jacket away, but in his mind, he's getting more of a mental net positive, a mental net happiness for giving his coat away to somebody else, right? So an act that can seem generous is really fulfilling his own selfish desires. Same thing with the kidney. <laughs> Just extrapolate that to all the analogies you can think of. Even if something seems like it's hurting us so much to do, if you do it, it's because there's a net positive in there 
somewhere for you. My line of thinking also goes against this idea that humans deserve something. Like, like we are all born with these unalienable rights, right? Life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. BS, right? Well, who is it? Um, Yuval Harari, who said like, cut a human open, right? You won't find any human rights in there, right? <laughs> like, if we didn't have society, if it was just like, a group of seven billion of us out in the wild, we would not have the right to life. We would just be killing each other to have our own selfish needs provided for. So we don't have anything that we deserve. We have things that we put in place because other people having them helps us out. I got a little off track there for a second. And you know, some people are gonna say, you know, isn't following your urges, your needs, your wants and desires, isn't that more just following the philosophy of hedonism? And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I don't study this stuff academically, right? I'm just figuring it out on my own. But as far as I can understand hedonism, that's more about the very quick, superficial, like sinful pleasures and kind of the overall urges, needs, desires that I'm talking about are not just that, but they also encompass the longer term pursuits, passions, whatever types of happiness. I think it's slightly different than just pure hedonism. But somebody correct me down in the comments if I'm wrong. Another idea that I think actually fits quite well into the philosophy I've already started to adopt for myself is this one of interconnectedness. I'll admit I copped that straight out of an Alan Watts book. <laughs> but it's essentially this idea that, you know, we as individuals are not our own entities, right? Like we survive because of things outside of us, right? Just think about oxygen for a second. We as humans would not function if oxygen didn't exist to come into our lungs. So already we need something outside of ourselves in order for ourselves to function. And so are we just our bodies, our organs, our eyes, and our minds? Or are we our bodies, our minds, our organs, along with the oxygen, right? Is the oxygen a part of us? And then if you think about this more, it's like, well, you know, as children, we would all die if we didn't have parents to raise us. So are we just ourselves or are we part of this larger organism that's keeping us all alive. It's kind of, if you think about leaves on a tree, they all might seem like very different things, uh, but really they're all connected to the same trunk. They're all connected to the same mission. And that's kind of how I see all humans as one big like giant organism that's trying to keep itself alive. And you could even extend that further. You could be like, well, if humans are all part of this organism and you know, we breathe out carbon dioxide, which the earth breathes in and gives us back oxygen, it's like, what if all of that is just one larger organism, right? And then you think about it in the context of space and you can just keep extrapolating that out, right? And so it's like, really, there's just such an interconnection between all these things that are seemingly disparate. And while it may seem completely unrelated, it's that line of thinking that has actually helped me out the most in my dating life. <laughs> you guys are like, wow, I don't know how yes or no did it, but again, she turned this into a dating video. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's that idea, right? That we are so small in the grand scheme of things, but yet so vitally important that it lends itself to this idea that we are inconsequential. Our value is so, so tiny, but also at the same time, we have this immeasurable, almost divine value. And I guess the, the way this has really displayed itself in my dating life is because I'm aware of my own insignificance, I don't come off as greater than thou. But also because I'm aware of this value being so strong, it's like when I find myself disrespected in little ways by other people, it's like, how could you disrespect what it means to be human? We are so, so, so important, right? And I let those people go. So, <laughs> so actually, really, you guys, if you want a better dating life, sit down with some philosophy books. <laughs> No, but that that has that has helped me quite a lot in that arena. No, it's so true though. I really do look for the solutions to many of my problems in nature. It's kind of like that book uh, Principles by Ray Dalio. I don't know if you guys have read it, but he essentially says that every human should have a list of principles for themselves that they figure out they want to live by 
throughout their lives, or, or a list of principles about how things work. And when you read his, so many of them coincide with things you find in nature, right? And it's really so true because no matter how much we want to be above our matter, our matter still matters. <laughs> we are still bound by the chains of being human. We are still bound by our biology. I think it's so funny actually that I started this video out with being like, oh, perspective, but this and this and this. And now I'm being like, oh, but matter, and but matter matters, and da, 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 right? Because you're starting to see how it comes full circle, right? How we have these nice, pretty theories to guide us and think about. We're aware at a meta level of what we are, but then whoop, it always comes back to the fact that we're just still ants in an anthill. Bodies in these flesh and blood suits that need to like, learn how to navigate. That's really why I think we live at such an interesting point in time where we have technology, where we're trying to transcend ourselves and bridge the gap between this and this. It's fascinating. And so this is all the theory that I use to try and tackle these man-made problems we have. But anyway, so basically what I'm saying is that during the days I spend most of my time untangling <laughs> things that I've been taught <laughs> and trying to build up from base principles. And now this has been my TED talk. <laughs> all right, that's all guys. Thank you. If you would like to build on my base, you could donate to my Patreon down below or please go watch more videos. All right, love y'all. Bye. <laughs>